I'm sitting down to record a podcast episode right now and I thought it would be fun to share my entire process, my entire workflow from start to finish with you because I've spent quite a few years sort of fine tuning this to be as simple as possible. I record, this is gonna be an audio only episode. So even though there's video, normally there's not, it's just an audio episode. And typically if an episode takes like an hour to record, I can spend maybe 10-ish, maybe 15 minutes afterwards and the whole thing is done, uploaded, scheduled. I try to do everything all in one take, live to tape, live to SD card. There are a lot of different types of podcasts and different workflows. My podcast is called The Enthusiasm Project and it is a personal, very conversational style podcast. So even though I try to plan things out and make it as polished as possible, if there are a couple of mistakes here or there or a couple of flubs, it's really not the end of the world. If I was doing something that was a lot more polished and edited or like an NPR style podcast, this type of workflow probably wouldn't work. But the reason I like this workflow is because I really like podcasting and it's something that I want to keep doing. And the reason I've been able to do this show for almost five years now is because it doesn't take up a ton of my time each week. I can be much more efficient with the production of each episode, which keeps the whole podcast just sustainable and fun and something that I can keep doing for the foreseeable future. So my basic setup and this basic workflow is based on the Rodecaster Pro 2, and it's been very similar since I got the original Rodecaster Pro 1 a number of years ago. And so essentially the setup is my microphone going into one of the channels, I have my intro and outro music ready to go, and then sometimes I bring in other audio sources, like if people leave voice messages for the podcast, or I need to play a snippet from a video or something in an episode, I'll bring that in on USB 1. And every once in a while, I will have a guest, another person, whether they're in here with me or remote online, so I'll bring in their audio as well. But I can do all of that in one take with the Rodecaster Pro 2. You could do this same thing with any of these style podcast interface recorder mixers. And you could set up a workflow like this through software like Ecamm or OBS, where you can bring in all these different sources and the key is to be able to just cue and mix everything on the fly. A common misconception with podcasts and things that are done in one take like this is that there's not a lot of care put into them or it's kind of sloppy or it's kind of messy. And that is really not the case or it doesn't have to be the case. Even though the show takes about however long it takes to record and the editing is almost non-existent or virtually non-existent. I do spend a lot of time planning my episodes, outlining my episodes. I have the Apple Notes app up here with some bullet points that I go through. And I've kind of run through the episode a couple of times in my mind just throughout the week before I actually sit down to record. You can almost think of it like how a broadcast news show is done where it's live and unedited, but people still had to produce it, script it, get stories, get clips, schedule interviews, like a whole bunch of planning and work went into it, even though the half hour news show just takes a half hour to produce. And it's also a skill that you build up over time. I definitely am not someone who was born with the ability to be comfortable speaking in front of people. I recognize this is a YouTube video and that is maybe ironic, but I was also a high school teacher for 11 years. And so every day, multiple times a day, that was training in how to communicate clearly and in a way that was engaging enough to hold the interest of teenagers. So those are skills that transferred very readily over to the world of podcasting and YouTube as well. But it is a muscle, it's a skill that you can build up over time. It's not something where anybody can just sit down, hit record and talk for 60 minutes or 90 minutes at a time and have it all be pure gold. And Trust me, not every episode of my show is pure gold, but I try my very, very best. So for today's episode, I'm using the Earthworks Ethos because I am the way that I am. I tend to change my microphone each week, although I've used this one for the past couple of episodes because I really love this microphone. I'm using my custom SM7B preset, which just ends up sounding great on the Ethos as well. So if I turn off the processing, this is how the Ethos sounds on its own, which is still a very nice microphone but I really like the processing and I just double check all my sound and make sure things sound good. Obviously I'm wearing headphones so I can monitor myself. And another thing is I always use a mouse when I'm at my computer, but when I do a podcast, I use a trackpad. So that way, as I'm going through and I'm checking off things that I'm talking about or I'm loading clips or whatever to play, I don't hear that mouse click sound in the background. And even though the show is in one take, sometimes I do need to pause while I'm recording. So on the Rodecaster, I can just hold down the record button for a few seconds. It will go into record pause mode. And then after I've you know had my water or taken my break or whatever, I can just tap record again. And it'll pick up right where I left off. 
every once in a while, I make a huge mistake or mess up really bad in the middle of a show, and then I need to put the episode into Adobe Audition and fix it up and edit it up a bit. But for the most part, I would say 9 out of 10 episodes, I don't need to do that. I can do everything just directly into the Rodecaster. So the way that I do that, which I'll show you for real in just a second, is I usually have my microphone muted, I hit record, I play my intro music. When that's done, I bring in my microphone, do the episode, mix in whatever other audio sources, pause if necessary. When I'm done, I mute my microphone, bring in the outro music. As soon as the outro music is finished, I stop recording, and then I just import my audio and upload it and... That's pretty much it. So we're gonna dive into that right now. I'm gonna stop this recording and start a new one, which will be the actual podcast episode. Hello and welcome, my name is Tom, this is The Enthusiasm Project, season 11, episode 8, Ain't It Great, and today we're going to be talking about some of my unpopular gear opinions, so get geared up to talk about gear, and what I mean when I say unpopular gear opinions is I'm not trying to... That's my whole episode. That was about an hour long. And again, this is just my setup and how I do this. I do have a page on my website that's full of recommended setups for different situations, whether it's a single person podcast, a multi-person podcast, audio only, video, live events. So if you're looking for other types of gear recommendations, definitely check that page out because I try to be as specific as possible and include everything like cables and memory cards and adapters and stuff. But this is my basic podcast workflow. So that episode it has been finished. I just stopped it right now. This is where I just rely on Rode Central to transfer everything. And actually, I'm not sure that I can be recording on the Rodecaster while I do this. I've never tried that before. So I'm going to stop this recording and switch over to just my studio microphone, the Sennheiser MKH-50. So click on the Rodecaster Pro 2, go to transfer recordings. My podcast episode is right here. Since I'm uploading to Buzzsprout because that's my podcast host, I like to then select Buzzsprout specifically. You can see Rode Central does have all these different options for different hosting services, or it just sort of normalizes and helps things to be sort of set up specifically for those services. But if you don't want to deal with that, you could do custom and then make all the settings exactly how you want them. In the times when I have to edit a show, I do import it using the custom setting just to make it as high quality as possible, have as much control over it as possible. But most of the time, when I'm not doing any crazy editing, I just select Buzzsprout, hit export, and then save it to my computer. Now the upload part of the process is probably pretty similar on, on most hosting platforms. One thing that I love about Buzzsprout, which I don't know if you can do it on other platforms or not, is when I click upload a new episode, I can start putting in the info without the audio file. So while my file is still transferring, I can start typing everything out and dealing with like the, the metadata of the podcast episode. So I always click skip and upload later. Usually then I go into an old episode, like if I go to my last episode and I just select the whole description, go back here, paste the description here, and then I only have to change a few things. This is season 11, episode eight, and then this is the 162nd episode in the whole series. I like to make sure that I do also then put the season and episode numbers down here to make it more organized in not only Buzzsprout's library, but all the other podcast directories as well. I don't do a lot of the other stuff down here, tags and things, because I'm terrible at marketing and promoting my podcast. <laughs> It's just the way that it is. My podcast is released on Monday morning, so even though I'm recording this on a Saturday, I can still schedule this for Monday, and then I just put 12 a.m. And then all I need to do now is wait for the podcast episode to finish transferring. How long that takes kind of depends on how long the episode is. I have found that it's about five or six minutes usually for me. It also depends on how you're converting it if you're 
you know, leaving it on those custom settings, if you're converting it to Buzzsprout, if you're doing other things within the Rode Connect app, then it might take longer or shorter to transfer your file. So now that the episode has finished transferring, I'm going to go back to the Earthworks because I really love how this microphone sounds. And basically all I need to do now is drag the audio file into Buzzsprout to upload it. I do listen back and skim through the audio to make sure everything sounds good and was recording the way that I intended it to. And now the file is uploaded, I've got it scheduled, I just save the episode details, and that's it. That is my whole podcast production process from start to finish. Again, this is something that is that works well for my specific type of conversational podcast, and it's also something that I've worked on and practiced over a number of years, so don't feel bad if you can't record an episode from start to finish without any mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. But if you do want to dive into the world of podcasting a little bit more, I do have two podcasting courses available. One of them is the Podcaster Playbook, and that is a DIY production guide that will help you develop a workflow for producing podcast episodes from start to finish. We go into more detail than recording everything into the Rodecaster, how you would actually put together a more traditional editing workflow. And I also have a course called the Podcaster Idea Book, which focuses on coming up with the perfect concept for your show that will not only get you one or two episodes, but allow you to create a sustainable podcast for the foreseeable future. Something, an idea that has legs and will help you keep going because podcasting is fun and it's, it's not fun to sort of feel like you run out of steam after a few episodes. And I've also got a course about video editing. So if you like how I edit videos, you can check out Rough Cut to Final Cut. That's where I share everything I know about video editing. So I hope this was helpful. Those courses are super fun and podcasting is super fun. And speaking of other things that are super fun, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. I do also have many more podcasting related videos, including an entire podcasting playlist if you'd like to dive into the wonderful world of podcasting a little bit further.